good morning, New Minds family. How is everybody? This is Kristen here, <clears throat> excuse me, and I am here for our Parents Power Hour. Um, as you saw, probably in our introduction, and I'm doing, I'm trying this out for the first time. I'm doing Instagram over on my phone, and I've got Facebook over here on my laptop. So if you see me looking in two different directions, I apologize for that. Um, New Minds, we're figuring all of this out, and we're super excited to be bringing you all week long, Monday through Friday, every hour on the hour, um, information, fun things to do with kiddos, some support for you as parents, and that's what I'm here for today. And um, if, if you have any suggestions, we're just going to start off by that, like pop in at any time with questions or any sort of comments or anything that you've got rolling around in your head. Um, in our comments on both Instagram and Facebook. We'd love to hear from you. And then also that this is meant to be a, a time where we can engage with each other, that you're not sitting alone in your house or locked yourself in a room trying to get the kids out of the way or something like that um, and feeling like that you're the only one that's here. We all know we are all in this together and that's what New Minds is here for as well. Our number one priority is to be sure that we're staying real with you, that we're bringing inspiration with you. Um, and so if there's any sort of, with that being in mind very specifically, if there's any sort of technical issues or anything like that as we're going on live today, throughout all of our sessions that we have on each hour, um, we would love to have your feedback. We would also love to know if there's any issues that are going on and you can't connect with us for some reason, okay? So let's jump right in. I've got my coffee. I don't know if you guys have, but I hope you have. Um, Certainly for me, it's important to have start the day with caffeine, right? <laughs> I hope that, I think that's one thing I noticed, that there's there plenty of coffee beans floating around most of the grocery stores, so I think, I think we'll all be able to survive that way. <laughs> um, but part of what I'm here is to offer some tips and strategies for you as parents um, that you're finding yourself in a situation that's unusual, right? That you're with your children for an undetermined amount of time, all day long, every day, um, that your parenting is in front of your face all day, every day, because your kids are going to be in front of your face all day, every day. Um, so while I can't be there with you, and I'd love to be there with you in your house and be like, you got this, you got this, like, just take a deep breath, you know, coach you through that. Um, what I can do is hopefully give you some, um, some tips and some other maybe strategies for yourself, because what I like to say um, when I'm trying to give some uh, guidance and support to other parents is that, you know, it's the whole, um, it's the whole oxygen mask strategy, right? And especially with what we're experiencing now, like take care of yourself first so then you can take care of your uh, children later. So that being said, that's going to kind of be the tone and it's not going to take the whole hour, um, but I'd love to know who's here. I see you've got a few people over here on Instagram. I'd love to know if you've got kids at home or if you're a teacher, kind of what your situation is. So if you'll pop that up in the comments, I'd love to see that come through. Let's see who's here. Oh, we've got some likes over here. Looks good. All right, we've got some teachers in the house. Got New Minds Austin. Hey, I wonder if that's Sophia or Ariana. Hmm, I wonder which one it is. <laughs> um, yeah, cool. Looks good. All right, so some of this is for you as, a, as, a, as an adult, even if you're not a parent. Um, some of these are tips that hopefully you can uh, use in your, as you're navigating these unfamiliar waters for most of us. Um, those of us that are you know, in this parenting age range between, you know, 25 to 40 or so, 45, you know, this is the first time we've experienced something like this, right? So how can we get through this? Um, a lot of the things that are probably running around in your head and that you're um, trying to figure out how to navigate is, of course, the overwhelm. And that's number one. That's, you know, of, of course, like immediate fear and reaction. Um, we won't, we'll talk about fears later, but what I'd like to address today is how are you handling overwhelm? How are you, how, what's going on inside of your head when you're thinking about um, all of the things that you have to do as a parent, all the things that you have to do to take care of your, your house, your kids, the food, the cleaning, the toilet paper, you know, that's all of those things just start to pile up, right? And oh, great. I see some parents of a fifth grader and a third grader in here. Those are, those are good solid ages. I'm glad to see that. <laughs> I think those are fun ages because they're independent enough that you can just be like, okay, go and do this. And also they're still fun and exploring and they're not just going to be like super grumpy pants all day long. They're not all emotions. They're not middle schoolers quite yet. But they're getting there. 
Um, but yes, so moving back to overwhelm. So that's probably where a lot of us kind of settle in. And I know for me personally, you know, waking up at 3 a.m., 2 a.m., these times where it's just your brain is still over functioning, right? And ultimately what I'd like to narrow in on today is that um, something I learned from a book called Getting Things Done, and it's more about productivity and how you structure your life. Oh, good, another fifth grader. Oh, and a kindergartner. Okay, <laughs> we'll get to that too. That's a little bit different. You can't just be like, okay, go sit down and do this for two hours. No, that's not going to work. Um, so one thing that we have for this sort of thing is um, a strategy or a thought that keep in, keeping in front of your mind is that your mind is meant for having ideas, not for holding them, right? So when you're spending all around 2 a.m., 3 a.m., and you're worried and overwhelmed, get it out of your head. So strategy number one is brain dump. Um, and we'll get to another uh, positive thing about brain dump also, but just get it out of your head. If, if you've got a notebook next to your bed stand, if it's a 2 a.m. wake up, Right, you know, turn over, flip on a, on a slight light, just get it out of your head, step one. Um, if you're not more of, if you're more of a tech person, um, something that works for me also is, you know, if I'm driving or if I'm worried about something somewhere else while I like putting on my makeup, getting ready in the morning, I might just lift up my phone and do a voice recording to myself. Just talking out loud will help you get it out of your head as well. So some of you might be more into writing and reflecting. Some of you might be more into, um, you know, having a, a voice to it. And that brings up another second benefit of getting things out of your head is that when you name it, you tame it. Um, this is also something that we use with students. Um, and we can use this for ourselves as adults. I am feeling X right now because A, B, C, D, E, F, G, <laughs> whatever all the reasons are, right? And that's what we do with students as well. And there's um, things that happen chemically in your brain for balance um, that when you put it out loud and put a voice to it, um, that that already diminishes it, right? You can't, you can't, a giant won't continue ex to exist in your head and grow if you put a name to it and if you label it and you bring it back down to this is what I'm feeling and acknowledge it, right? So some of this is the actual acknowledgement of some of the fears that you have of some of the anxieties and overwhelm that you're experiencing. And that's certainly a step as well. Um, I know a lot of people will get into this space of like, well, if I give into it, then, you know, I'm not, I'm not over, you know, I, I, I'm too stuck into that and I won't be a positive person. Yes. Uh, positivity is another step of, of handling overwhelm and also knowing that, as a parent, as someone who's going to be for the next few hours <laughs> of, of every day, like you're just going to be there and you're going to be thinking about, okay, but this and this and this positivity is part of helping you get through it and also acknowledging what it is that you are struggling with. Okay. So name it to tame it, um, get it out of your head. So uh, ultimately getting out of your head and naming the negative thing that's bringing you down, that giant that's keeping you back. Um, those things help you to go in with a brain dump. Um, so brain dump is the strategy that I started to talk a little bit about before with getting things done, um, GTD. And um, brain dump is not just your worries, it's everything. It's even your to-do list, okay? Um, for some of us, it's, it's, you know, what we have to do for work. And now that your work is in your home because you're, you're, I'm here in my kitchen um, with, you know, my family. I live with my sister and her husband. And we have a four-year-old and a two-year-old in the house. And, you know, my husband, my, I don't have a husband, <laughs> my brother-in-law, my sister's husband, he's in the office working and my sister's about to go upstairs and do music time um, because they typically have kinder music every Monday morning at 10, 15. And so they're jumping up into a room upstairs to go and have their kinder music routine that they always have, 45 minutes of early childhood music and movement, um, making that they go to once a week anyways. And so all of those things that we've usually siloed in our life are now in one place, right? And there's so much beauty to that if we can get there. And knowing that you have these things to work through about like, okay, well, what's happening in my house today, right? I've got these kids need to do the homework and I've got, you know, um, my sister needs to be doing this with the kiddos upstairs and my brother-in-law needs to be sure that he's still able to work and focus. And those things are practical and tactical and they may not seem very huge as far as like, just logistical things about life and what's going on today. Um, but 
when you take it out of your head and you write it down, you put it there and it's out of your head. Um, getting out of your head creates the mental space and the openness that you might need to make it through that next meltdown that your three-year-old's going to have at around 1230 when they usually take a nap at preschool, right? So if you have that emptiness and that open space um, for creativity and problem solving, right? Because problem solving comes from uh, openness and being able to think creatively. And if you're not able to think creatively, then you're back at ground zero again. And you're less likely to be think, be able to think creatively if you're overwhelmed with all of your thoughts in your head. Okay. So strategy number one is brain dump. Um, if you find it helpful, some people, um, you know, they know that their kids are going to wake up at 7:30, And so, um, I have a, a community that I'm a part of, an online community, and a lot of them are, it's called, it's about starting the day and what you do to start your day with routine. And knowing that for a lot of parents and a lot of, the, of those of us who are surrounded by children, whether you're a teacher um, or you're a parent, um, that morning time before school starts, before your kids wake up, that's kind of the only time that you have. Um, it's not recommended, of course, if you have an infant or um, if you have a child, you know, less than two years old that, you know, their sleep patterns and all of that are having an exhaustion on your body. So by all means, sis, don't even go there. I <laughs> just pass, pass by this tip that I'm passing on that I learned from this other community. But, you know, set your alarm to wake up one hour before your kiddos. And while some of you are like, oh, my God, my kids already get up at 630. I can't do it at 530. Oh, my word. Um, do it. Because when you do that, you're doing it for yourself. And when you take care of yourself, then you can better take care of the people that are going to be up in your house for all day long for how, who knows how many weeks, right? So when you wake up in that hour, that's your time for practicing reflection gratitude certainly I mean that's number one I hope that you're hearing that in the social media that you are consuming I hope that the people that you are listening to like us here at new minds that you're getting the the attitude of gratitude you're getting that positivity you're getting um, people feeding into you in a way that is increasing your your positivity and gratitude and finding the littlest things even is totally okay even if it's like, I'm grateful because I really like this striped shirt that I'm wearing and my yellow earrings, and that's what made my morning this morning. I'm not going to go to the negative place of how am I feeling about my hair because moving on, but I'm going to start from that gratitude space of, you know what, I really like this shirt a lot. I like the little ruffles on it, and it seems silly, but it resets my psyche. It resets my mentality. It resets my growth mindset. It resets me and how I'm thinking about the way that the day is going to go, even finding just little things to be grat grateful for. Um, so in your morning practice, you know, getting that gratitude in there, getting that brain dump opportunity in there as well. Um, those are two things that I would like to suggest to you. And then the third thing is take it hour by hour for today and how we approach our overwhelm gratitude practice, brain dump, and take it hour by hour. Um, knowing that, you know, if this hour wasn't so great because you've already done breakfast and normally your kids are off at school already and you're, you know, in your regular work routine because um, it's 10, 15 right now and you'd be in the, in the gr g groove, jive, yeah, groove. <laughs> I was trying to put those two words together. If you're in the groove of that, and this is messing up your groove in a different way, um, refocus in and know that, okay, well, maybe from 1015 to 1045, it's going to be a little bit of a struggle. But 11, I'm going to reset. And if that means uh, taking a deep breath, if that means going back to your gratitude practice, and most certainly with kids around, and this is something that we know as educators is best is to be real and to be transparent. I'm feeling frustrated right now, you know, saying things like that, that name it to tame it is going to model for them as well. Yes, this is difficult. And that's something that um, if you uh, tuned in this morning to Justin's um, message or message, like he was, he was preaching the word, everybody <laughs> to his message to us, to his uh, recommendation. That's probably a more uh, open word. Um, but his, his tip there was, yeah, it's hard. And that's it. Leave it, leave it at that. And same thing, you know, the kids are, you know, they're, it's only the first day. So things are feeling great so far. 
And a few days from now, things are going to feel a little less great, or maybe for you a few hours from now, because this isn't your usual jam. You're not usually at home with your kids all day long, or you're not a, you're not a teacher, or you are a teacher and you're frustrated because you're not able to be with your kiddos that you care about so much at school, right? Um, so acknowledging that even with the people that, that are in your house, right? All the people that are in your house, because you're there for each other, and you're there with each other. So yeah, you know what? This is hard. It's hard. And acknowledging it will bring a completely, you'll probably even notice the shift. Like, I even feel it when I say it out loud to you all. Um, and I don't even know 80, 90% of you um, that are here, but it just, it feels different just to say, this is hard. And we don't have to put any qualifiers with it. We don't have to say, it's hard, but you guys, we're going to get through it. And those things are true. Um, and also, when you're child is having a meltdown in front of you or you're working on that math thing that their teacher assigned and their teacher is also trying to figure out how this whole e-learning thing goes. So as to, as the days move forward, they're going to be refining their practice and it's probably going to change over the next few days. And you're going to be, as a parent, trying to navigate that all over again. Well, I don't understand. She started with this on Monday and now she's coming back with us at this on Wednesday. And you know, your child isn't used to this level of, of interaction is as well with the family unit or they're used to having other adults pour into them. And that's a whole different thing. Um, and so recognizing that and saying, you know, I know, I know it feels unusual. This feels different. And it's okay. It's okay for things to feel different. It's okay for things to be hard. It's okay for things to be uncomfortable. What's not okay is for us to lose our patience <laughs> about it. I had lots of other words in my head about that. Um, but you know, what's not okay is for us to, to freak out about it. What's not okay, because those are not healthy things that are gonna help us to move forward. And so just acknowledging it and being able to have conversations about that, and I know Justin's gonna come back with some awesome tips that's, that's a little better word. He might preach at us. We don't know. We don't know how it's going to go. <laughs> um, but ultimately, naming it to tame it, knowing that if you acknowledge it as well, even when your child is having that meltdown, I know, yes, this is hard. And you're crying. And it feels a little awkward as an adult to say factual things out loud like that. But when you're with a child that is in that state of fight or flight, right? Um, navigating so many changes for especially, um, well, any child that's school age level. I mean, developmentally from kindergarten through 12th grade, 21 years old for boys, their brains are changing so much. There's so many hormones, so many things going on with developmental changes, body growth changes, um, learning new things, being ready for things in the world, not, you know, being ready for them yet who knows all of the gamut of things. And so even for any child in that moment of freak out of trying to figure out all of this new stuff is, is identifying, yes, this is difficult. This is hard. And it's hard for me. It's hard for me. I'm right here. I'm in front of you and you're upset and I'm upset too. We're both upset. Now, what will we do to be unupset, <laughs> right? So then you can kind of jump into that problem solving mode. And we'll come back to that on a different day because um, today is a little bit more about how we deal with overwhelm. Um, I think that's two of the, yeah. So the final ultimate thing of when you are, sorry, I just had to look at my notes. Um, I actually, I'm using my notes from a talk I gave last week with a group of moms and um, that talk was called Five Ways to Transform Your Fear into Fierce. So I would love to hear how your fierce parenting is going on over the next few days. Um, great. Yeah, someone else just said that they really like the, 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 the identification of it's hard uh, without the qualifier. That's great. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, I'm curious now. Well, I'm going to check on my notes in a second as well. Um, pop in here with whatever what other kind of things that you are um, – that you would like to practice when you're, so imagine right now you've already had, maybe you've already had some struggles this morning, um, or you already know your children and the kinds of typical struggles that you're going to be facing over the next few hours, but you do know your children. Um, what are some, some ways that you can see that you could practice naming it to tame it, tame it? like with similar to the, um, this is hard. What are some ways that you guys could see that that could work for you? I'm curious. 
Let's see what people say. It's an awkward silence, but I'm okay with it. <laughs> it's new for all of us to be in this sort of, like we're interacting, but we're not, right? <laughs> Okay, cool. Yeah, so the question is, so if you're just joining us, which I see a few more people have popped in, um, in and out, um, this is our Parent Power Hour session. It's not gonna take the whole hour, I promise. Um, but our topic today is how we deal with overwhelm um, for ourselves first, and then how we're kind of, what we're talking about right now is how you might envision yourself uh, using some of the strategies we just reviewed with your children um, in your house. So number one, we were talking about brain dump, uh, getting things out of your head that our minds are knit are not meant for holding ideas, they're meant for having ideas. And so we talked about that. We talked about um, dealing with overwhelm by naming it to tame it, um, recognizing that in yourself, that naming even if as an adult, when you name the feeling that you have, when you name your frustration, when you name whatever exhaustion or whatever it is that you're experiencing, um, even out loud, that there's power to that. If out loud is a little bit less your jam, then you might write it down. Same thing with the brain dump, all of these worries and things that you have floating around in your head. Um, you might be someone who is more of a writer or someone who's more of a talker. Guess which one I am. <laughs> um, so I do, like I'll pick up my phone and just click the voice recording and just be like, all right, this is what I'm worried about right now and blah, 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 blah. And you know, eight minutes later, I've got a recording of myself that I'll probably throw away at some point. Um, but yeah. Okay, um, Ben is asking to be a part of my live video. Let's see what happens with this. I don't, I think he wants to chime in. Let's see. I think it's on Instagram. <laughs> this will be really interesting for a second, you guys. Oh, he is there. Hey, Ben, do you have something you're interested in adding? <laughs> I don't think he knows that he's on. <laughs> All right, looks like he's got his puppy dogs there. <laughs> okay, I, this is his jam. So I was, I was like, oh, he has something to add. I'd love to have him add something. Um, we'll come back. Maybe he'll, he'll add something <laughs> later on Instagram. That'd be really great. Uh, to hear his voice on this as well. Um, so we were kind of talking about dealing with overwhelm, naming entertainment. Um, another tip there is if you're just joining us, we're kind of working through how we're dealing with overwhelm and some tips there. And this is our parent power hour, and we'll have a power hour every morning um, at 10 a.m. And um, another suggestion that I have for you is to uh, you know, choose a time in the morning that you're taking some reflection for yourself. And that to include in that reflection is a gratitude practice. And it can be anything from big to small, right? It can be things that are, um, you know, I've had my silly, uh, silly example of, of, I feel like it's probably silly, but it, I love it. So I love the shirt. It's got a cute little ruffle here. And I might be wearing PJs underneath, but you know what? I was like, I'm going to go on live and I like this shirt and it makes me feel good when I wear this shirt and it makes me happy and I love coffee. I am so grateful for coffee. You might feel a little bit forced at first. That's okay. Like work through that. Like start there because when you start there, then at least you're still, you're still being not negative or you're still, yeah, you're being the opposite of negative, right? You're being positive. You're thinking of gratitude. And when you come from a place of gratitude, your heart's more open. Your mind is more open. You'll be a, you'll be a better parent. Um, even if, and it, it also might feel forced sometimes, um, you know, if you're in the middle of, of a meltdown or a math worksheet struggle with your child and which tune in here, um, for the rest of the day, we zero worksheets, just, be free, everybody. No worksheets. <laughs> Not with new minds. Um, although teachers that are watching, oh my goodness, the overwhelm that you're experiencing of all the things that you have to create and digitize of things that you've, you're have you used to delivering in person. Wow. So by all means, start with worksheets. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to go with what we know first. And then we're going to go and we're going to be more creative and find other ways to navigate all of this. But um, the idea is that you know, you start with what you know, and I lost my train of thought. 
and it's going to come back to me. Um, but when you have that place of gratitude, then you're more likely to be open and creative so that when, here it is, so that when you're working through, you know, something with your child, whether it's a math worksheet or some other frustrating experience, that you have that moment and you can even model for them, right? You can be like, okay, I'm, I'm taking a deep breath right now because you're upset and you're not wanting to do this and you're resisting a lot. So, and it's frustrating me because as your parent, I want you to do well. I want you to continue to grow and learn and be a good human being. And that's going to come back to another thing that we'll talk about with brain dump. Um, and that'll be the last thing. Um, but as your parent, you know, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, how are we going to get through this together? And I'm fresh, you know, be transparent about that and talk to yourself model for your child how you're talking to yourself even out loud and saying I'm telling myself right now to not be frustrated with you because I love you so go to that place of gratitude if you have to I love you so much and I remember when you were the teeny tiniest baby and you smelled so good and you were a little tiny lump and you were so warm on my chest when I held you and put you go there even if they're 17 years old go there if you have to like go to that place of of gratitude, of loving your child because they're going to see that they're going to feel that love for you. You're going to feel the shift in energy between the two of you instead of you, no, you've got to do 10 more things on your worksheet. Your teacher said you got to turn this in because we got to have check-ins on Thursday and you blah, 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 blah. That all overwhelm starts to come back again, right? Um, so getting to that place for yourself, modeling for that, modeling that for them, talking it out loud even if you have to, and it might feel uncomfortable at first because also, um, because also we have, sorry, I was just getting a notification, um, because also we have um, opportunities for kids to get there and to see what we're doing, okay? Um, so those three things are there. We're just kind of recapping and reviewing. I know I've said everything 5,000 times. Um, it's sort of the same concepts that we started with, and I've been... As people have been popping in, thank you for your patience for those of you who have been here the whole time. Um, as people have been popping in, I've been kind of recapping the conversation that we've been having. So I appreci appreciate your patience there for the kind of continuous review that you've been experiencing if you've been here the whole time. And ultimately, when we get through that space, um, and I kind of touched on this a little bit, but this is going to be the last thing, is that when you're able to free your mind and get in that, that place of, of gratitude and you've got a few strategies on how to get through that, then you can connect more deeper to your why. Why it is that what's important for your family, um, why you're you know, why it's important for your child to do well on that math worksheet, if that's what you're frustrated in at that moment. Why is it important for your family household to feel a certain way emotionally for the next few weeks while you're figuring this out? Whatever your why is, um, you'll be able to narrow in on that a lot more um, focused when you have the open space to, to get there. Um, and we'll talk about that later this week, about how when we can let that be the driving force behind everything that we do. Okay. Um, so thank you so much. And I really love how four or five or six of you jumped in and contributed, um, knowing what kind of kiddos you have, uh, what kind of age range of kiddos you have even, um, more specifically is helpful for us to know, for me to know what kind of examples I can give strategies for you as the parent. Um, this has been our parent hour, power hour, excuse me. And um, as you probably heard, if you didn't, um, in our intro this morning that Justin started us off, um, all this week from Monday to Friday, we're going to be having um, hourly um, options uh, for you to tune in either on your own as a parent, um, as this one has happened, or um, with your children. And for the majority of the time, it's going to be you and your children um, with your students. And so if you'll, if you go into our um, Facebook and Instagram posts, we both have posts on both places where it shows you hour by hour the content that's coming. Next coming up at 11 is the steam train. Choo -choo, come on, rather. Okay, that's not a real thing. I just made that up. Um, but the steam train is at 11, and that's going to be with Mr. Dorian. 
And if you see the schedule in both of our places, you'll see that it's targeted more for kindergarten through second graders. And this is going to be all live, hands-on, STEAM learning, some games. Um, I, Mr. Dorian brings so much energy with him uh, when he's working with kids, whether it's virtually or physically. And I know you're going to love it. He always has so many interesting things to, to share with kiddos. And kiddos are just captivated really by all of our inspirators, just legit. Um, if some of you are, are get the opportunity to witness our inspirators in, um, in action in your schools, we've got, see I've got a um, Archgate Montessori moms up in here and some other um, of our school partners. So we, yay, I see that. Yes, we love Mr. Dorian. <laughs> I love to hear that. Um, and we love to hear from you guys continually on the comments. Um, either on our lives or on our posts. Um, what kinds of things are you interested in seeing? And uh, we're just kicking off this morning. We'd love to hear from you as things are going on, whether it's technical issues or suggestions you have on some of the content that you're really um, hungry for. And my my part every morning at 10 a.m. is that I'll come in with tips and suggestions. And so for you as, an, as a parent or as a teacher or as a grown human being that is in a home with children in it, um, that's something that I'm here for you to support you and hopefully give you some tips for that. So we have a whole slew of things. We're going to be here until five o'clock and we're going to have uh, Steam in Espanol. We've got intro to the dungeon verse. Oh, I'm just now seeing a misspelling on that. See, this is what happens when you're just trying to get stuff out. <laughs> um, it's all good. You got it though. And I'll correct this misspelling later. Um, and then we have Around the Globe with Mr. Walter and another revisit on the STEAM train with Mr. Dorian again later on today at 3. And that's going to be with 3rd through 5th graders. And we have uh, some a deep dive into our new me vaults. We've, as many of you know, we've been around since 2013. And so we've got so many awesome courses and activities that we're going to be sharing with you all. All right. I'm going to sign off. And... I can't wait to hear from you all more virtually, and I hope you have a great time, and I'll see you guys with Mr. Dorian in about 20 minutes. All right, everybody. Bye-bye.